ten English phrases with the word start from EspressoEnglish.net. Number one, a fresh start. A fresh start means a new opportunity with no mistakes and no bad things in it yet. We often use this phrase after leaving a bad situation and beginning something new. For example, after a bad breakup, he decided to move to another city and look for a fresh start. A breakup means he ended a romantic relationship. Number two, be off to a running start or get off to a running start. We use this expression when something has a good, fast beginning with a lot of speed and power. For example, the presidential candidate's campaign is off to a running start with a huge rally in the capital city. A rally is a gathering of people where they get excited about a cause. Number three, start out and start off. Both of these are informal ways to say start. There is no significant difference between start out and start off. Here are some examples. This is a big project. Let's start off by organizing the tasks. I had very little experience when I first started out in this job. Number four, start off on the wrong foot or get off on the wrong foot. This expression means to make a bad impression or begin a relationship with a conflict or misunderstanding. For example, during my job interview, I started off on the wrong foot by calling the manager by the wrong name. That's definitely a way to make a bad first impression. Number five, a startup. A startup is a company that has just begun operating. Startups are usually innovative companies that are trying to do new things, and startups usually receive money from private investors to fund their operations. For example, I like working for a startup because the team is small enough that I can have input into major decisions. Number six, a head start. If you get a head start, it means you get ahead of schedule or you start before other people. For example, the report isn't due until next Friday, but I'm going to get a head start on it by doing some research over the weekend. Number seven, start a car. To start a car means to turn on the engine or motor. We often use this expression in the negative when there's a problem with the engine and the car won't function. For example, my car wouldn't start this morning, so I had to take a taxi to work. Number eight, jump start. If you jump start a car, that means you connect the car to another car's batteries using cables in order to give a sudden, strong burst of power to the car that is not operating. So you jump start a car when there's a problem with its battery. You need to connect it to another car in order to give it power. More generally, the expressions jump start and kick start mean to put things in motion when they were previously stopped or slow. For example, few people were buying the product, so we put a big ad in the newspaper to try to jump start sales. Number nine, start a family. Native English speakers often use the expression start a family when two people who are in a romantic relationship, usually married, begin to have children for the first time. For example, we want to buy a bigger house because we're thinking of starting a family soon. Again, this is just another way to say have children. Number 10, start over. Start over means to begin again, usually because the work you did before failed or had a mistake in it. For example, oh no, I put salt instead of sugar into the cake. I'll have to throw it away and start over. 
Sometimes the hardest thing about studying English is just sitting down and starting, right? You have to make time to study, and then you have to search the whole internet to find something interesting to learn. It's hard to start. But my courses are designed to make it easy for you to start studying every day. The lessons are arranged in a logical sequence, so all you need to do is log in and begin. Also, each lesson is short, so it won't take up too much of your time. I focus on teaching you the most useful English words and phrases, not a bunch of stuff you don't need. If you've never taken a course at Espresso English before, you might be wondering, which course should I start with? Although there's no official order to my courses, my suggestion is to start with Everyday English Speaking. It's my most popular, practical course, focusing on the phrases and expressions that native speakers use. Click on the link in the video for more information.